राधे राधे माई लविंग हक्स एंड माई ओबेस सो ऑन द बेस ऑफ द स्वीट विल ऑफ गुरुदेव we are still in search for chaitanya charit amrita quotes in shishiradaras sudanidi and we will go on today from verse number 244 it's not 45 like it was written there in radhasya it's 244 actually and it is about the jewel of amorous pastimes so we will hear the verse because there are two quotes from chaitanya charitamrita in the commentary and this commentary is actually not very long so i guess to get the whole connection it's good to read the whole thing verse number 244 brema bodhira solasat tarunam am be oh, cho sorry taruni maram bena gambira tri ृतिका her eyes are very deep because the blissfully they blissfully came up from the ocean of prema and fresh youthfulness and her beautiful shining face emits fresh moonbeams of soft nectarian smiles and tender gestures this jewel of amorous pastimes shri radha is freely playing on the lap of her beloved in a kunja on the outskirts of brindavan showing wonderful expertise in funny love place her eyes are very deep because they blissfully came up from the ocean of prema it's a so wonderful to have this picture in the mind isn't it her eyes are very deep because they blissfully came up from the ocean of prema it's like the sun is rising over the ocean blissfully beaming but here it's not the sun it's the moon like face of radha these beams are not hot they are not burning anything they actually enlightening and cooling but we will hear of this more her eyes are very deep and her beautiful shining face 
emits fresh moon beams of soft nectarian smiles and tender gestures. This jewel of amorous pastimes, Sri Radha, is freely playing on the lap of her beloved in a kunja on the outskirts of Brindavan, showing wonderful expertise in funny love plays. The jewel of amorous pastimes Commentary Sri Radha is overwhelmed by loving eagerness like a chataki bird that is thirsty after the showers from the fresh sham monsoon cloud. Suddenly the Shyama cloud appears in the sky of her fortune. The maidservant sees that high waves appear on the ocean of Srimati's love when she sees the moon-like face of Shyam. And the maidservant's eyes become like fishes that blissfully swim on these waves. Now comes the first quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Eto bhava bushaya bushita radha anga dekele uchale krishnera sukhapti taranga Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Seeing these ornaments of ecstasy on Radha's body, Krishna feels the waves on the ocean of his bliss increase. This delights Krishna even more than when he actually unites with Sri Radha. Ebhava yukta deki radhasya nayana sangama hoite sukha poe koti guna. Chaitanya Charitamrita. Here was the second quote. Seeing Radha's face and eyes in this mood, I feel more pleasure than when I directly unite with her. How deep are the eyes of Srimati that come forth from her wonderful fresh beauty and her ecstatic love and that show different emotions. Yesterday we heard about this uh, from uh, Vilap Kusumanjali. Um, what is it called? Sorry, I'm a little bit. I have a little cold, and so <laughs> my brain is not working correctly today, and. My voice is a little bit disturbed also. Um, we know that philosophy actually is describing poetry. Poetry is describing the feelings. And here we have another wonderful example of that actually. So many loving examples are given. P. 
pictures for our heart. Sri Rata is overwhelmed by loving eagerness, like a Chataki bird that is thirsty after the showers from the fresh Shyama monsoon cloud. So we can imagine that a bird who is only drinking that fresh water from the fresh Shyam monsoon cloud, which is very rare, she must be very, very thirsty. And then all of a sudden, suddenly, that Shyam cloud appears in the sky of her fortune. Now she is very lucky. She feels herself blessed. It's her good fortune that this Shyama cloud, which she was meditating on, appears. All of a sudden it's there. Maybe her thirst will be quenched. And of course, in this moment, her eyes, they come up from the ocean, like the moon is rising from the ocean. Very deep in her eyes, we could read exactly her feelings if we could see that eyes directly. We know that is only possible in our citadel. But everything is written there in this wonderful deep eyes. All her desires to fulfill wishes which Shyam even doesn't understand himself in his heart. She wants to fulfill him. All these desires in her heart, they can be seen in her eyes. They are very, very deep. She's emanating that together with her fresh youthfulness. Her youthfulness is always fresh. She is Kishori in the right age. Right now, she is ready to enjoy this wonderful, special exchanges, amorous exchanges with her beloved. Completely fresh. And her face is really shining like that. And it emits fresh moonbeams. The moonbeams are actually compared with her smiles and her tender gestures when her eyes are moving, when all her limbs expressing her feelings very tender. This is her mood. So no wonder that Krishna is out of his mind, completely lost. This is giving him much more enjoyment than to be together with her united. And of course, like always, Radharani is in a very joking mood. in an 
a morris choking mood and this is actually making him completely crazy how deep are the eyes of shrimati that come forth from her wonderful fresh beauty and her ecstatic love and that show different emotions. Nectarian moon rays emanate from her sweetly smiling, moon-like face. This is not a blazing light that burns the eyes, but a soothing, transcendental, nectarian light that soothes the chakura bird-like eyes of Krishna and keeps him always eager for another drop. Another wonderful picture our heart, how this bluish chakora bird is trying to catch one drop after another. He's completely out of his mind. There are so many drops he could have, but it's impossible to get them all at once. So he's very eager that not one of these drops are wasted. So he's very busy to get drop after drop. So his eyes are very busy to get the whole scene, to see every movement, every smile, every detail of Radharani's appearance, to get all of her feelings for him. Swamini looks as beautiful as a fresh golden wine embracing the black Tamil tree, Krishna. Now usually a tree is keeping the wine because the wine is growing around the tree up. But actually in this case, it is like that, that the wine is actually holding the tree. Because without the appearance of Swamini like that, making him very eager, he could easily collapse. Easily he could fall in a swoon, but he wants to see all the details, take all the drops. He cannot. He would be bereft of that nectar. So that wine is keeping him holding him alive, holding him awakened. Oh. 
On special occasions, the maidservant can also see how Swamini is an ocean of funny, amorous love arts. Making Shyam drown in the depth of amorous bliss. So we have some example of this also. When the parrots in the morning actually exchange what was going on in the night in the Kuncha. What Swamini said to her beloved. Why you scratch my breast? I'm not Putana. <laughs> Don't treat me like that. I'm not a demon. <laughs> and we can imagine that this amorous love arts are going on. So all these pictures are given to us for our smaran. So many pictures, true poetry, We can be really very thankful to Srila Ananda Das Babaji, who actually in a very wonderful way organized all these statements in wonderful lines so that we, we can really just let us fall in and dive deeper and deeper without doing anything. Just let us sink in. And this is the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He didn't told us that directly, but when he was in Gambira, he enjoyed himself all this and he left his prasad touched by persons who know how to enjoy that and make it even more sweet. And so the Goswamis, they left Maha Maha Prasad for us. And through Ananda Das Babaji, it gets even more sweet. Because he actually is presenting it in a way that we can just take it. We don't even have to think about, yes, but how, in which line, and uh, when should we do this and that? And what? We don't have to think anything. It's just there in the right way and we can just let us fall in. That's wonderful. That's the mercy. We are swimming in the mercy of that Acharyas and of that Mandri, or that Mandris who left her prasad for us. So if you would like to add something or ask something, share some feelings, please do so anytime. It's not that I want to speak here just, you know, but of course, as you feel, there's no pressure. You know, Guravani, uh, when we was reading this verse, I was also following with my book, you know, and I was wondering, how is possible that uh, we can see Radhika such a clearly in this verse, even if we cannot see her? Mm -hmm. So, 
from where it's coming this this power and of course we was uh, you you just said and we was said yesterday you know that white tree is some vehicle of it can be vehicle of any subtle feelings but what to say about spiritual feelings yeah, I, I was thinking for sure uh, this is because of the person who describes that so in this case here is Prabodhananda Saraswati and all Acharyas and uh, Ananta Das Babaji they mixed the churn also like you said for us just given already already make food just just to take and uh, <coughs> so I, I was thinking because often we said that in this material world is difficult to find something similar uh, like manjari bhav that we can start to meditate motherly love okay friendly okay but manjari is very difficult so i was thinking also that theater maybe is something very similar like that that when we <coughs> look look this uh, shame this this uh, scenario no <coughs> is is similar similar like theater uh, but in theater where we are participating also but mostly with feeling and it's come to me that to feel that actually service and feelings are one one things if there is service there will be feelings and we see here there is a lot of uh, ecstasy in in manjaris who serve who looks that and in krishna who looks radharani and radharani who start to give to him this emotion everything starts always from radharani so i'm just i'm just wondering and, and this is really really magic this this is real magic what i can feel here that we can visualize something what we cannot see in the spiritual way and that it give us impression really amazing i'm really amazed oh, every time when i can feel that all together of course yes it is actually like you say do you know that einstein he said once there are two ways to see the world one is that everything what happens is just normal and the other way is that everything what happens is like a wonder it's like fresh happening now it's it's just you know indescribable wonderful so we can say one one way is the spiritual way one is materialistic <laughs> yes because it needs to be in a humble position to see that actually everything is full of wonder isn't it when you are a small child and you are in the forest you see everything is so wonderful how can a tree grow of such a little semen how it's possible there is a tree inside the child when it hears it the first time he thinks no it's not possible how how it's possible so how it's possible like you said that this can actually take shape in front of our eyes in the heart or in the mind because like you said it's like an like an actor which is actually giving his complete feelings inside that act and makes it alive before our eyes he has only a text before him but then this actor is acting like he feels that text and in this moment it takes shape and we can see it although 
It was just in between. It was just a text. And that's why poetry and arts, especially arts, are needed to actually dive in that process. And that's why, from a material point of view, I'm always sad that art is actually dying here more and more. It's all, all, almost dead. It's almost dead. Because what they are selling as art today is really very sad. <laughs> But they also know that whatever gives feeling to the people, bring them more near to God consciousness, more near to love consciousness, and this The rulers here do not want. So that's why we choose the other side. We choose the side to see everything as wonderful and fresh every moment. And this is the truth. Because then your feelings are alive. And when your feelings are alive, then your citadea comes more near and more near, and it will grow, because feelings, they are actually connected with the soul. The body doesn't has any feelings without the soul. We can test that when the body dies. We can make with them whatever we like. Feelings are there because of the soul. And the soul is living from feelings, and the soul is living especially only from spiritual feelings. Because there are not really material feelings. This is just the ego who wants to sell us our feelings as material. So the ego wants to sell you a spiritual feeling. Like, sometimes we may think that we are not happy because we, we didn't get the new car or we didn't get what we wanted, you know. We didn't get the subji we liked the most or whatever, you know. So we may think, ah, we are sad because of that circumstance. But actually this is not true. False ego is telling us like that. We are missing Radharani's love. This is the truth behind. But the ego is telling us, no, no, you are sad because you didn't get the new car. You didn't get the new whatever. You didn't get your husband what you really would have liked or whatever. You know, all these things. We think it's because of that. But if we go deeper on the platform of the soul, it means the soul is missing something. So what the soul can miss? Spiritual feelings. Because we are used to be with Radha. It's the nature of the soul to be with Radha. Constitutional position. This is the word Prabhupada uses in Bhagavad Gita on the last page constitutional position. It is our constitutional position to be in Bhav, in Mahabhav. So if we miss something, we could ask us the next time, is it really that thing outside, what we miss? and get some other connection to what we miss. A materialist cannot do this. They are not Radhe. able. Sorry. Radhe, Radhe. Yeah, I have a question, Goravani, and I had this question for a long time, and I think you can help me with this. Why did I choose, if my 
position, uh, constitutional position is with Radharani. Why did my soul or why did I choose to leave her or to come here to experience this craziness? Why did I choose this <laughs> stupidness? I don't know. Mm. Why did this happen? This question actually came up so often. I heard this so many times. But I still not understand why. <laughs> it was discussed also in uh, in other circles of people. I know, and I asked also Shamananda, my husband, and yeah. he said, "Ask Guru Dev," yes. because he could not give me the answer. Really, I know we have this free will. Krishna gave us a free will, and but why did I have had this as a wish? What happened? Let, let's see it like this: You are actually born in a kingdom, in a big kingdom, very rich. So many aspects this kingdom has, right? I mean, the world of Radharani and Krishna is not just a small one. It's really, it's the biggest kingdom existing. So you were born there. Now, you may want to see some different aspects of this, isn't it? Are you not free in love to do that? No? Are you pressed in some position? Your constitutional position is your constitutional position. Mother knows. So although the mother knows your constitutional position, she may give you the chance to see in other words, little worlds, you know, the world of painting some pictures, the world of the garden, the world of whatever is there, you know, in this kingdom. And you may make your experience and after a while you see, oh yes, now I saw everything, I, I know it's very colorful, it's very bright, it's nice, yes, but I was not happy there, I was not happy there, I was not happy there. Only in this position I am happy, so I want to stay now in that position, happily. So we may take it as an experience. This is not Shastrik, what I am telling now. But this is my picture of how to get this question out of the head, you know? Because why it is this question so, you know, going on our nerves all the time? I heard so many explanations in the past, and once I heard, you know, it's not really happening, it's like, you are just in one moment you thought how it would be if I would be Krishna. Then you were lost in that thought and after your material experience you just wake up again and say, oh no, I don't want it. <laughs> it was just a thought. But actually, I have children, I was also a child once and just by watching them I think it's very natural that a child wants to see what is there in this kingdom in my home you know my home has so many varieties and I want to see but of course I'm coming back to my constitutional position like now we are in the kindergarten or in the playroom, because this is actually, it even has scriptural evidence, because it is said that one-fourth of the whole creation is material, and three-fourth is actually pure spiritual. So now we are in this one part, and this is actually clouded. And these clouds are the false ego. 
This is like the playing room. You just play and by playing you make experience. You learn something, isn't it? You just play. The mother can come inside any time. Because it's not separated, you know. We think it's separated, but actually is the playroom separated from the living from the living room of the mother more than one or two doors? No, because she wants to hear the children cry and if it's needed she will run there immediately, isn't it? So Radharani is not far away. I mean, besides the fact that she is always in us, she is in every atom, in another aspect, of course, not as Radharani herself. Expansions of expansions. We know all that. So that means she is always with us in every moment. She can take care fully in every moment. In, in this material world, it's true Nitai and his expansions. So, the love of Radha is always with us, in every aspect, in every atom, in every little plant, everywhere. So, she's not far away. She's taking care of us. And we may, you know, play a little bit in the kingdom, make our experience, and then happily come home. Mama, Mama, do you know what I realized? <laughs> I realized that I want to be with you. I want to cook with you. I want to surf with you. Papa also. But I want to forget that you are my mama and this is my papa. We are going in real play time. Lilas. We are going into Rasa Lila. Because mama really wants to, uh, really knows how to play. She is the most expert. And we can be with her everywhere, everywhere, in every situation, the most intimate. She will not hide anything, really nothing. And there are other children, they want to play the game. I marry my papa. Yes, copy buff, okay. <laughs> or something like that in Twaraka. Or, you know, all this possible. It's just a game. So let's play. The whole existence is just a wonderful fresh game of love everywhere and we are taking part as we like I see it like this because this makes peace for me and uh, let me go straight for the goal because Actually, I think I have seen enough. <laughs> when you go back to Radharani's abode, you have seen all the Narayan planets and all this. You were like Narayan, yes. You were eye to eye with God because you were yourself God or at least like God in that moment. 
This is all behind you. You made this experience. I realized that actually when I was kicked out of some temple. In this moment, this realization came to me. I was by Nishingadev. I served him two weeks because some Pujari was sick or I don't know. I don't remember. It was They didn't have any Pujari. So they asked me. So I said, oh yes, I have time. I'm happy to serve Nishingadev because he's very thankful, very easy to get his heart. I always felt he's like a mother, very motherly love, Nishingadev. For me, it's the aspect of Radharani protecting her devotees. And I felt like that, serving him. And I was so happy. I was really so happy to serve him. And I felt so at home that at one point I thought, why not come here and, you know, serve more? The day after I was kicked out of the temple, some politics, you know, I didn't even know from when, from where they came. It was just out of the sky. I was kicked out and forbidden to come there. And in this moment, I realized that I got some bit, some big kick in the ass from Nishingadev because he said, "This is all behind you. What you want here? You don't belong here. Go to Radha." Go leave this place. You belong to Radha. Go out. And soon afterwards, really Gurudev came. And then I understood where I belong to. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. What's your name? Uh, Sharanagati. Ah, Sharanagati. That's a wonderful uh, name. You too. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Guru Dave gave me a great gift and challenge. Um, <laughs> I wonder too if our separation from Radharani makes those moments when we feel connected all the sweeter um, with our, our distance or disconnection. Uh, in living this physical body now, how much sweeter is reconnecting in the moments as we practice through our physical body lives um, in preparation for being reconnected fully. Um, that, I mean, Guru Dave talks of separation of sweetness, has talked to me about it, and that. It seems that that longing that we are living now um, is building us for a greater connection later, too. Really. Thank you for your sharing of your feelings and thoughts. It is just a little moment. We think, oh yes, it's a long life, but actually, in the whole existence, it's just a... But this impression of suffering in separation, it must be there first as a base, because if this base is not there, then we would run away again at some time. <laughs> if you do not miss something, you have no appreciation for something, you can easily go, isn't it? My experience was in, in ISKCON, I had you know, this association with devotees in the temple of Heidelberg bus station. And
And uh, it was a very wonderful time for me. I could always go there, it was like a home. And then all of a sudden it was gone. I took it for granted. But all of a sudden it was gone. No association anymore. And in this moment, first time I realized what precious gem I lost. Then I was out of as association with devotees. I was living there, I had my business there, I could not move, you know, to any other place, so next temple was then 150 kilometers. So I always had to drive and I had to take time. In this moment, I think it was the first time that I realized it's not, it's not good to take anything for granted, because then you have to learn to really appreciate what you have, to get it back. So nowadays, when we are here and we are sharing and we have this exchange of feelings, I'm so really deeply thankful that this can happen, especially you don't have to go anywhere, you can just sit at home, just open the chat or hear the Zoom and then, then it's happening. So first we have to miss something to really appreciate because whatever we don't appreciate, we don't have. And I know, I had a house, I had so many things I lost. After I lost it, I got the appreciation before I didn't have it. Really, it was just, you know, it was just life, day by day, it was like that. <laughs> when it was gone, I realized, oh, you had something, but you didn't have it, because you had no appreciation. So now I'm rich, because outside I have nothing, I'm free, I can move. But inside I have appreciation for every little thing I have. And now I'm rich, before I was not. So we have to get rich and miss Swamini and then we will have her because if we miss her then this will give some resonance, you know, and this resonance will come in our heart, Swamini will come more near and more near. And then we really have her. And we will not lose anymore anything. But first we have to miss her. So it's a perfect arrangement for us to be in the child room, Blay, Miss Swamini and her Seva, then cry for her, full-heartedly, full-heartedly, not just a little bit. And then she will take us back.
And we have role models here. Srila Prabhupada Saraswati, Srila mm. Raghunadas Goswami. They actually showed us how to do it. In the moment when they came back in their sadaka, in the moment they were crying. Like a child the mother picked up in the playing room has now at her breast. Child is sucking milk and the mother wants to put it down again. Immediately the child cries. Immediately. No, no, no. <laughs> the child wants to say with ah, Don't do it. <laughs> I want to suck the milk. This is eagerness. And this is the eagerness we should have. I don't want to leave the breast of Radharani, that wonderful sweet milk I'm sucking, that embrace, that warm embrace. But the breast of Radharani means the breasts are actually the love of Radha. There are two breasts, one breast on the right side, one on the left side. And we know there is a motherly side and a fatherly side in everyone. So she has full love for Krishna, but also full love for her manjuris. And we are there at her breasts, warmly kept. So as soon as she tries to put us down again, we should cry full-heartedly. But this you cannot do artificially, you know. It has to grow in the heart, that feeling, it has to be filled with feeling. The act has to be completely filled with emotions. Like in the case of Srila Raghunadas Goswami in his Vilap Kusumanjali. So it takes time. But we are working on that by again and again crying. Rade. Rade, Rade. Urachashari Priya. Yes. When you say we cannot do it artificially, so does it mean that at one point, serious point, everything will be taken away from us? Family relations, also, also body in some way. Everything will be taken away from us by the mercy. This is the mercy. At one point, we will give up everything. Nitai will arrange everything. We don't have to do something for that. We only pray. We don't have to know how it will come, in which way. We don't have to even think about this. The only thing is that we pray that we are freed. Freed from anything which is hindering us on this way. And Nitai is arranging everything. The right time, the right circumstances, the right thought in your mind. Because then you will really understand. 
Oh my God, it's a blessing. Otherwise, you would cry again to come in the playing room. <laughs> put me down again, put me down again. I want to play more. I had this moment when I was drawn out of my house from my ex-wife. She was kicking me out. Also, all of out of nothing. It is not explainable on a logical way why it happened. It just happened. And in this moment I was standing in front of the house raising my arms and said, now you have me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now you have me. And before I was thinking, how, how could I ever get rid of all this? You know? How it's possible? It's impossible. I'm so attached to all of that. Nitai just made like, that's it, gone. And there was no way, really no way I could think about to bring myself out of all this trouble which was there at once. So I had no other chance to just say, okay, now, first time in my life, I'm so helpless that I cannot even think about how to get out of this. Logically, there's no way. So I had to surrender. So in this moment, it's the right time for full Sharanagati. <laughs> and Nitai, you know, sometimes he is really making jokes with us and we don't realize. All of a sudden, a person with the name Sharanagati is sitting right next to us in such a moment. Or other persons are coming in our life and, you know, they have a role. It's really, it's, it's so wonderful, mystical, and also always filled with humor. But can we get it? Nita is as personal as Radha. Radharani is the most personal. And Nita is taking care of us here in this material world. Very personally. Don't think that there is less love like Radha has to us. No, it's full, full potency. Like Panchatattva is full potency of Radharani. Full. They are taking care of us in all aspects. You want to have bhakti? Srivas is there, he will help. You come up to love, to Brahma, Gadatha is there, giving you full Shakti. And the outside forms are also there. Mahavishnu is with us, and Nitai is with us. 
And they are all expansions of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who himself is our beloved Swamini. And even her lover is there. Why? Because she wants to give us full blessings. He has to be there because she wants to give us the highest Mahabhav, Madanakya Mahabhav. She has only when her beloved is with her. And when she feels that he's not there, even though she's sitting on her uh, on his lap, then it's Mohan Mahabhav. And she wants to give us both of these highest feelings. So he has to be there. And this is our Darya. This is our Darya Lila because it's in the highest state of Mahabhav. In the same time, it reaches down to the lowest fallen souls. This is our Darya Lila. Nothing higher than this. So the point is actually what we are working on is that we get aware of it. Fully aware of it. Not here I heard that. Here, I feel that. I feel that Swamini is always with me. I feel that she is always in Madanakya Mahabhav and is actually sharing that feeling with me. I feel all these aspects who are there, who cannot be described in a few hours. <laughs> so we don't have enough time to describe them all. But you know what I mean. We have to feel all these aspects. And when we can feel them, we are already there. Because to feel means to be with. To understand means separated from. Now I have to find a way to come there. But at least I understood I want it. But to feel it means you are. You are there. So this probably also means when Guru Dev says, I'm always with you. Yes. That's it. Yes. He feels you every time. Every time he wants, he just thinks about you and feels you consciously even. But unconsciously, he is all the time with you because the Guru principle is you are always in the arms of Radharani, at the breasts of Radharani, sucking her milk. This is the truth. This is the Guru principle. So, Swamini feels you all the time. And the Guru, because he is a Manjari, he can feel it. Because he can always feel, she can always feel what Swamini feels. In this way, Guru is always with you like Swamini.
he doesn't have to think about you. But if he likes, he can concentrate on it and has a clear picture what is your position right now. Where you are, what you are doing, all this. It's a standby connection. Not an on-off. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's such a wonderful question and we need actually to remember it again and again that we are fully in the mercy all the time. There is not even the slightest moment that we are out. We may feel like that, but we are not. And there is this wonderful picture given by a Christian. He actually said to God, you know, there are prints in the sand of the way of my life. In good times, I can see there were always four footprints. You were always on my side. But in bad times, I see there are only two. You left me. And then God is giving the answer and say, my dear, in bad times I carried you. That's why they are only two feet in the sand. So we have to decide, should Mama put us down again or should we stay at her breast, in her arm? She is not only the jewel of our life, she is also the jewel of the life of Krishna. The jewel of Amora's pastimes, that's our Swamini. But the first step is that we accept her as our mother. I used to do like this, when I think about my mother, I don't think about a mortal body. Whenever I hear mother, I know who is my mother. So even here in this life, we can give her the right position already. We may have a mother or she may be gone. It is like it is. But actually, when I talking about my mama, then I'm talking about Radharani. Because only she can give full love in all circumstances at any time. And this is the healing this is full healing of my situation. Because however 
Our mother was working. She can never be like Radha. So it's not her fault that she didn't give us 108% of love because she could not. She got what she got and you can only give what you got. And especially in my age, it's like, you know, my mother latestly had a connection with war. And war actually makes all love diminish. So how you can expect from a mother who was in war that she is very fine and very lovely all the time and, you know, she is so much wonderfully taking care in a very fine way, you know. It's practically impossible. She was growing up in war. What kind of experience of love she has. So she can only give what she got. It's not her fault that she could not give more. But I, in my position, can say, well, she did her best. I'm thankful. But now I want to have the best mother ever. <laughs> And I wish her that she also has the best mother ever. And I wish to everyone, because it's the truth. So I will live like it. And I don't care if others will follow or not. It's not my business to think for others. But I can act for myself. So my mother is the best mother ever. She is the most beautiful one. She has so many good, wonderful characteristics you cannot even imagine. Even if I would start to tell you about this, I could not finish in one lifetime. So my mother is indescribable, beautiful. She is the best person ever existing. She is lovely for everyone, even for God himself. So that is my mother. I'm so happy that I have such a mother. And my father? Oh, he has also very wonderful qualities. He is a little bit nasty, like boys are, but very lovely person but most important he is always under the umbrella of my mother and that makes him the best father so i have the best parents ever believe it or not but this is the truth So if you are going in this way and this is your understanding of your bodily consciousness here and of course it goes much further in your Sitadeha Some way may say you are a dreamer then I say yes, I like to dream and even if one day the dream is not true I had at least I had a wonderful life full of wonderful dreams And you? <laughs> you had some nightmares? <laughs> you want more of these nightmares? I'm not.
This is what, what small children are doing. They are living in a dream, in a wonderful dream. And they are happy with it. And when the so-called grown-up people push them out of the dream, they get unhappy. Our real existence, our constitutional position is in the most wonderful dream ever. It's called Rasa Lila. This is our home. So I want to live there. Always. I don't know how to get there. I have no idea. I have no qualification. But I'm, I will go on dreaming till the day will come that it will be the truth. And I hope and I wish that you will all dream with me together in the same way. And the book for the dreams we have here Let us dream, Vilap Kuzumanjali. And then let us live. Jai Jai Shri Radhe. We didn't came so much for it. Eh? <laughs> so next time we will read from 246. Yes, a lot of nectar. Oh my God. Tree. Yeah, a lot of quotes of Chaitanya Charit Amrita. And this is the point. This Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi is beginning with the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and it is ending with the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's the full nectar of Radharani. Radharasa Suranidhi is bringing us in that clear picture who actually is Radharani. And Vilap Kuzumanjali is giving us a clear picture of actually what is our position in the connection with Radharani. Our Sitadeya our services, everything. I love this Radharasa Sudhanidhi so much because actually it's a description of my real mother. I forgot her. I don't know how it happened. Maybe I was too much playing around in the kingdom. <laughs> Get lost somewhere. <laughs> but now that I hear this description, the fire is burning that I actually want to go back to her.
And after finishing this Radharasa Sudhanidhi, by the mercy of Gurudev, he told me that I should read Vilap Kuzanjali. And every word, not only once, but five times, to go more deep. So I think we, if you like, we will meet some years more, as long as we stay here. <laughs> and I beg you, if we start Shishi Vilap Kuzumanjali, you all have some experience, so then please share more of your experience with me, because it will be not so easy to stay at one verse five times. So we need more inspirations from all of you. <laughs> Yes, we want this and we want to stay with you for many, many years. We have nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to stay with you together with Swamini forever. Let's do this all together. <laughs> we will serve her in so many ways and we will have so much fun. I can't wait. <laughs> Even not for from the from this playground <laughs> <laughs> we will all go out of the playground and enter the kitchen and cook with, with her together for her mm -hmm. beloved we will make a feast for him that he will fall unconscious and then we will sing some songs to bring him up again in his consciousness and then we will bring him to some Nivriti Nikunj. And we will go on serving and serving. Because we are the manjaris, my friends. And we keep on serving all the time. We are the manjaris. We are the manjaris. No time for Krishna because we serve only Radha eternally. Thank you, Garavani. <laughs> you you mean. <laughs> you introduce us uh, on the beginning of the never end story. So hopefully we will continue forever. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Dayanidi, always a very wonderful inspiration. I really love your association and I hope you will share with us more and more and deeper and deeper. I know there is a very, very deep, loving heart. He's just a mirror of you. But uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I will continue to be, uh, to take the sun and to reflect. I will try. <laughs> Thank you. In the end, we all reflect only the love of Radha coming through Guru Manjari to us and through the whole parampara. So we are all just like these disco balls in the 70s. <laughs> Little mirrors on one ball. <laughs> but I would also like to hear from Siddhanta Adhikari. Dandavat Pranams, thank you so much, everybody. You are so sweet, my goodness. I just, your words are like so much nectar flowing. It's really amazing. And uh, I'm here in Mayapur Dam now. I have a residence here. I'm eternally 
seeking, begging for the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu. I am, of course, very fallen, and I feel this is my place to start. Um, even though I've been searching for so many years, somehow I keep coming back here, but uh, I just, uh, I always feel the love coming from Guru Dave, no matter where I am. And I was fortunate to spend a few months in Vrindavan, but now I'm back here, but I'm still connected so strongly. And thanks to you and others who are really, I know it's not an easy thing every week to do this Zoom, and I really do appreciate it so much. It's so nice to hear you. And uh, I just uh, want to express my gratitude to you and, and all the others. Because after all, we're in this together, you know. We're traveling this path together. We're never alone. And I love that that nice story when you're describing how the uh, the devotee is going and seeing the four footprints and then suddenly there's only two footprints and <laughs> Lord says I was carrying you it's so nice, such a nice story thank you so much for that it's, uh, really beautiful. so yeah I don't have so many realizations I'm still very much attached to this material world and full of bad qualities but uh, I have hope when I hear you and Guranga Sundar and others, I'm filled with hope that it's uh, one day, one day my day will come, I think, I hope. <laughs> so thank you so much again. Thank you so much. And please send us some dust from this holy place. <laughs> Nitai and Goranga's footprints are there everywhere. It's an amazing place, yeah. Actually, it's Radharani's love in two forms. Mm. Yeah. From Goranga, we get the dust of Radharani and her beloved. And from Nitai, we get the dust of Radharani's love, her lilas, everything complete mm. here in this material world, wow. very near. So we need that blessings. So please send us something. Okay, that's right. Thank you so much. Nitai Gaur Premanande. Nitai Gaur Premanande. Arrivo. So have a nice time, and we we'll see us next week, hopefully. 